So Katrina and I are sisters. I'm two years older, and we grew up in the late '60s, early '70s, when there were no car seats. And there well, were, car seats were optional, but our parents did not opt. I'm not even sure they were an option for us. I think they were an option by the time our little sister came around in the mid '70s, but mostly she stayed in a basket in the mm-hmm. back seat. And the back seat she could have to herself because Nerissa and I really wanted a station wagon, and our parents did not think that was necessary, so they had a sedan, but it being the 70s, the sedan was separated from the trunk only by a thin piece of canvas, Mm -hmm. easily ripped Mm -hmm. by small children, (laughs) and so we would sit in the trunk of the car, Mm -hmm. and we would sing. We would poke our little heads up from the... Behind um, the back seat. From the way back. And we would sing, we all live in the yellow submarine, the blue submarine, the pink submarine. Only back then we were always in sync. We didn't even have to discuss it ahead of time. We always knew what color came next. I think it's because um, I worshipped the ground Nerissa walked on. And so I would just watch her lips. I could (laughs) feel what song was coming next. Um, But that that was our first concert venue the trunk of our parents' Plymouth Barracuda. Nerissa and I were brought up in a very musical household, not where music was a profession of anybody's, but where music was like cooking. It was like what you did. You had to put dinner on the table. You had to entertain yourselves before and after it, so you sang. And um, I remember being in high school and realizing that if I didn't learn how to play the guitar, I might not end up with a musical family like the one I had grown up in and I loved that part of my family. And I probably was 16 before I realized that not everybody had that, that it wasn't just a given in life that you would sing your way through the day. And um, I, I tried to learn how to play the guitar And then I ended up marrying a man who has more guitars than shirts. (laughs) And so I stopped and I didn't pick up the guitar again until um, I had my second child and I lost my voice and I picked up my guitar because I missed music and he never let me put it down. And um, it was through that process of becoming a parent and figuring out how I wanted to give my children music that I realized um, maybe I should figure out how to share this with the world and I went to my big sister, as I often do, and said, I think we need to figure out how to start sharing what we were given with everybody else. And we made a CD of family music, and then we created a class for families to make music. And pretty soon, we had the idea of making a book. And um, so we wanted the book to be um, a bunch of different approaches all at once. We wanted to tell stories about our upbringing And we wanted to um, share songs that we'd learned and songs that we'd written. But most of all, what we wanted to do was let parents know that it's not rocket science. And in fact, being like a classically trained musician or a professional rock musician isn't necessarily a boon to making family music. That you could even be a complete non-musician and just love music and love to listen and that's an awesome way to bring music into a child's life. Um, Music, as we've been discovering as parents, you know, it's a cliche, it's the universal language, but it really is a language and it really is universal. And when kids, uh, and it's not that hard, just like any language is not difficult if it's your native tongue, music isn't hard if it's around you all the time. And, um, And it's a wonderful, amazing way for family members to bond throughout the chronology of the family. You know, like when the kids are really little, when the kids are medium, when the kids are surly and won't talk to their parents, except, and and maybe choose music that their parents find abhorrent. Um, And I think there's a reason for that, and we talk about that in the book. Um, But it actually can be, and we found this um, as members of a folk rock band, that music can be a way to bridge those very difficult years too, and especially if you've had it from the early years going forward. So it's, you know, it's a book, it's it's a resource book, and hopefully it's a book that um, families can dive into from all different times in their, in their lives. 